hey it's me and welcome to my channel today i'm going to be recapping tuesday's episode of eastenders on the 23rd of july 2019 i hope you enjoy it and be sure to subscribe for more videos so the episode begins with max looking all kinds of sad jack walks in tells him he's going away with the kids for the weekend obviously they need a bit of a break jack's kids knocks over a photo of abby max clicks off Jack claps back, basically tells him, pull yourself together. We know baby Abby's alive, she's fine, you know, give yourself a chance. And then he walks away. And then we see the photo of Abby smashed and Jack looks really sad. And that's the end of that scene. So this scene opens up with Kim on the phone. Stacy and Ruby are catching up on the fight about Kat. Stacy's pissed off at Martin as well for parent trapping them. Ruby basically tells her to appreciate Martin. That was the end of their scene. And then Denise walks in, her and Kim clock each other. She goes over to Kim. They haven't seen each other that much since she fired Kim. And Kim's on the phone. She seems to be accepting some sort of job offer. Denise asks if she's all right, and she doesn't really respond. Denise basically says, we need to sort things out. It's been weeks, we've not spoken. Kim is showing zero interest, literally doesn't care. Denise sits her down and is like, it's your fault, I fired you basically. You should have made more effort with Chantel. Kim might as well be like, la 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 la, she was not listening. And then she said, her and her fabulosity has got a job as a tour guide in Scotland. I can't make this up guys, this is Kim. Um, and then she said that she's leaving tonight with the kids. So the next scene opens up with Chantel and Grey at home with their family. They were talking about plans to go to Karen's because Karen has an announcement. They're not sure if she's pregnant because she's been dating someone. I have no idea what it could be. Knowing Karen, it could be anything. She probably went on another date with that Karen lady. Grey and Chantel carry on flirting. They're playing with the kids. Everything is adorable. Um, it's actually super adorable. They were flirting about getting in the shower together and I'm just rolling my eyes because Grey is a psychopath and we're all going to find out on the one hour Christmas special. So the scene cuts off to Karen's. She's home with Bernie and Keegan. She's very excited about the new era and everyone should be excited. Keegan and Bernie are talking about it but he's a bit distracted finally reveals to Bernie that Tiff is leaving Walford. Bernie's a bit pissed off that she didn't tell her. So in the next scene, baby Abby, Rainy, Ian and Kathy are at the fields. Stuart comes to visit. Everything's all jolly. Well, to an extent. Rainy's in a bit of pain. They talk about the fact that she needs to go to the hospital and that she needs painkillers. And they mention that she's a recovering addict. Ian looks up all suspicious. I think he's gonna try and go full custody. You heard it here first, just from a look. That's what I think. Kathy insists on taking Rainy to the hospital and asks Ian to look after Abby. So we're in Vic. Shirley tells them all that she's leaving. She's gonna step back from working at the pub, but she's gonna cover a few shifts if they need help. Um, Mick looks a bit concerned, Linda's over the moon because they're going to save on vodka behind the bar um, and said that she's going to give her a proper send off. Mick, like I said, looks a bit concerned, he offers her money but she doesn't really want it and she mentions that she's going to be working for Phil. So now we're in the house with Stacy and Martin, Stacy forgives Martin for obviously parent trapping them and she said she appreciates the fact that she tries to help him her and Kat um, that's obviously coming off the back of the conversation with Ruby um, she said that they're gonna make a dinner and dessert he gets all excited but then she actually meant dessert and the baby starts crying and then that's basically it Martin looks quite happy with himself because this whole situation could finally be sorted so now we are back at Karen's, she's got her announcement, all 50 of them are squashed in the flat and they all start making jokes about how Karen might be having a baby, how there might not be any room in the house. 
Bailey sits between Louise and Keanu. She asks about whether or not Louise will be quitting school now that she's pregnant. Louise says, you know, there's more choices for us now. It's not kind of, it's not like that. Mitch pitches in, starts throwing shade about how women need to be more independent from men and starts looking at Chantel and Grey who is so obviously based off Mr. Grey from Fifty Shades of Grey. Not that I've read the book or seen the film, but Grey is definitely psycho. We saw her get beat up that one time and then is all in the background now. But definitely something suspicious is going on. Christmas special, wait for it. So the scene goes to Bailey, who is talking about her school project Louise wants a trophy for recycling and Bailey basically schools her. In the meantime, Karen's in the background freaking out, dropping things. She's a bit nervous and she mentions that she's been sick all morning and they all look at each other like, hmm, she's probably pregnant. So Rainy and Kathy get back from the hospital. She couldn't get any painkillers because she used to be an addict. Max sees them, runs down at the square at them. He's mental, screaming, literally like, Friday, like fuming. Ian comes out, basically tells him, you know, calm down, calm down. So here's Ian trying to defuse the situation. He's like, you know what? I won't stop you from seeing Abby. There's no need to be angry. Kathy basically is like, go away. You won't see Abby if you keep drinking. Max, whose only emotion is anger at the moment, he is fuming, grabs Ian by the throat. Ian is freaking the F out, like, call the police, oh my god, somebody call the police. And he runs back in his house, Stacy walks past like, what in God's name is happening? Um, Max starts kicking off, trying to break down the door, and Stacy is basically like, just leave it, leave it. Max walks away. Stacey follows him because she's not got enough of her own problems. Um, obviously, she's going to try and help Max because Max clearly needs help. So we are at Karen's. She's at home with the family. She's obviously distracted about something. They're all talking about something random. Grey is throwing shade about absent parents. Bailey is just giving a sass in that whole scene. Um, and then Karen hops up. She has an announcement to make. She mentions that she's seeing someone. She starts announcing it and talking about herself in the third person. And I called it that lady Sharon, no, Karen, she met at the Prince Albert. They are dating now and she's like, I'm a lesbian now. So in this scene, Stacy and Max are at home. Stacy's like, enough of the alcohol. Max is like, they've taken Abby. Stacey's like, Abby's back. You can see her whenever you want. Don't push your family away. Max, feeling sorry for himself, is like, why are you trying to help? Blah, blah, blah. Why are you trying to be Agony Aunt? And Stacey's like, you know why. And if you remember why, it was that whole scandal, the cheating scandal between the two of them that ruined the whole family. But as you know on EastEnders, massive scandals that ruin the whole family is more of an annual thing. That was so 2008, apparently. So Stacey goes to get rid of the alcohol and she finds that Max has cut himself. She tries to help him, takes a seat and Max shows her the cigarette burns and that he has been self harming So in this scene, we're back at Karen's. All her family are giving her support. For having a girlfriend bailey's back at it again with the sass tells mitch that he's probably why karen's gay now keegan isn't having it talks about how they've had to put up with all her horrible boyfriends and how is she gay now blah 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 karen hops up and says that she's happy and that all her family should be happy for her and they all are like mm. Mm. they all look at each other not really sure what's going on I'm not sure if keegan's going to be happy about this so Denise bumps into Whitney at the market. They start talking about, by the way, her and Jack need to get back together anyway. They start talking about how Kim is moving and she's trying to stop her from moving. Whitney talks the same about how Tiff is trying to move. 
and they have a bit of a discussion and how you know Tiff has been through a lot it's probably best that she leaves so she forgets about some of the things that have happened in Walford and Guinea's kind of things mm, maybe that's what Kim's trying to do so in this scene Linda is having a bit of a party she's over the moon that Shirley will no longer be working at the Vic she's throwing a leaving do for her Mick comes in he's a bit worried that he doesn't know what kind of work Shirley will be doing with Phil everyone on the square knows that Phil's a bit dodge if you work for Phil and you can't fix cars then what do you do hmm, suspicious so he's a little bit worried about that so in this scene Phil's home Ben comes in he's got the same question you know what Shirley's role gonna be Phil says that she's gonna be dealing with customers and Ben has obviously got two jobs he's gonna be way too busy for that Ben doesn't buy it Ben wants to know the truth Phil says it's because Shirley is reliable and won't draw any attention to herself Ben is obviously salty about the situation demands to know what's going on because basically based on their last conversation he was under the impression that he was getting the keys to the castle Phil says he got the wrong end of the stick and Ben leaves all upset so we are at the Slaters Mo and Jean are watching TV Martin is carrying on with his dinner plans with Stacy but he's not heard from her so he's all where Stacy I'll tell you where Stacy is she is with her buddy Matt so she was fixing his cut because um, he hurt himself. She asked him how long um, since he's been self-harming. He said it was since Abby was taken, but I'm pretty sure it was back when he was in prison for Bobby's murder. I definitely remember seeing something like that. Stacey asked him to speak to someone. And he's like, I don't have anybody. And he starts talking about how he's a bad person. Stacey's like, you're not. I know how you feel. You don't deserve this. He's not having any of it. So Stacey's like, you know what? This is on you. Just like Bradley is, is on me. But we need to move on. He asks her to leave because he's having none of it. During all this, Martin calls her because he's not heard from her. And she ignores the call. So in this scene, we're at the Beals. Kathy and Ian are talking about Max and how he's going to break in again. They need to keep away from his, um, his family. Baby Abby and Rainy are playing. Um, Rainy is still in a bit of pain because she's not got any painkillers. Kathy is basically like, go rest. We'll take care of Abby. She really starts to feel some pain in her ribs. I think it might be broken. So Kathy offers to go and ask for the painkillers for herself because they will not write a prescription for a former drug addict that way she can take care of Abby better Ian isn't having it he doesn't want you know a drug what did he say a drug addict or a drug addict looking after the baby and doesn't want anything to do with Max so in this scene we are back at Grey and Chantel's Grey makes a joke about Karen saying that it was a coming out party. Chantel claps back. Grey asks why she's giving so much attitude. Uh -huh. Anyway, she's pissed off um, and it's like, don't laugh at my family. Grey was pissed off because of her dad saying women need to be independent. But yeah, she's not having it and she storms off. So she goes to leave and he grabs her and he's like, excuse me. And they're sort of just staring at each other luckily someone knocks on the door and they both kind of snap out of it she goes to answer the door and gray looks menacing um there's keegan at the door keegan asks to come in and gray's like oh come in there's nothing wrong and chantelle's like what she looks quite shaken up as well and that's the end of that scene so martin and stacy are on the phone she rings to tell martin that she is with matt and that he's in a bad way and that's why she's not home martin clearly isn't happy about it but in the end he's like fine do what you need to do of course it's fine and um, stacy's like thank you i'll make it up to you and martin's obviously disappointed because they had plans and obviously a human on the inside obviously on the inside because it's martin um about max we are back at Chantel and Grace. 
they're talking about the fact that Karen is now gay. Um, Keegan isn't quite accepting it yet. He's like, how could she be gay? She has six kids. And Gray starts giving him advice and on Tiff as well, which I think is a bit unsettling. Um, he offers to stay and Chantal looks a little bit worried, a little bit sort of apprehensive, but they agree that he is going to be staying around there. So I hope he gets to see some stuff so that Chantel can get out of this situation. So we are at the Vic at Shirley's leaving do slash retirement party. Ruby and Mick have a bit of a catch up. She said she has a bit of a date tonight. I don't know why I said a bit of a date. Um, but then she leaves and Kim comes in. She thinks the leaving do is for her, but it's actually not. Um, Denise comes in and mentions how she gets it. It must be hard wanting to leave everything in Walford because you know, her house has been sold. The Albert's been sold. Vincent's left blah 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 and she's sorry that she didn't consider all that um and then she orders a drink in a scottish accent and that was the end of that scene and i'm really starting to think that kim might actually be leaving i really hope that's not the case i really hope that's not the case so then it cuts off to mitch and shirley at the bar they just have a quick conversation nice and short family comes first keep Phil and his dodgy dealings away from the pub so Chantel's in the kitchen Gray walks in he starts talking about how he's not the bad guy he let Keegan stay his family no her family wind him up but he puts up with it blah 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 and then Keegan walks in so Keegan walks in goes for a beer Gray wants one Gray lets him have one Chantel's like no and Keegan's like, why don't you just be more chill like Grey, just having jokes. And then Grey leaves and Chantal goes up to Keegan and she's like, I'm really happy you're here. Thank you. So we are at the Slaters. Martin is just packing up. He spent all this time making dinner for Stacey and that special evening. And she never came and he's like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine just gonna go to the bank so it cuts off to Max's he is in bed Stacey's taking care of him it's a photo of Abby Max is all upset and feeling all vulnerable and he says that whenever he closes his eyes he sees um, Abby and he sees Stacey so the very last scene of the episode it's outside of Max's house the scene pans a little bit there's somebody watching them and it turns out that it is Martin he is obviously a fuming that his wife is spending all this time with this guy that she has had an affair with in the past so he's not happy about it and he's just staring at the door and that was the end of the episode so that's the end of this recap Martin got top billing for the episode um, hope you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe for more videos.